Hi everyone, this is Cindy Gunter Baldo um, at Llama Letters on Instagram, and I am finally doing another installment of Llama's Love Lettering. Um, you can find all the previous episodes of Llama's Love Lettering on my YouTube channel, Cindy Gunter, or at llamasloveLettering.com, and it also has all the workshops, the worksheets that have to do with these videos. Um, so as background if this is your first time watching my videos these are a series of videos that are designed to help you learn to letter with an emphasis of lettering in your planner um and i tend to be a little salty and i don't censor my language so disclaimer up front in case you were wondering okay so today's lettering is going to be, instead of focusing on fonts, I'm going to do, and I know I said I'm going to keep doing brush lettering videos, but I'm still practicing that, that I really want to get a little bit better before I pretend to teach you how to do anything. But I am going to focus on something that has been requested more than once, and that is talking a little bit about how to space, how to lay out your lettering, whether you're doing it in a small space on your planner, or whether you're doing it on a chalkboard, or whether you're doing it on a project life card, I don't know, on your on your ass cheek, I don't know, whatever. So I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Please understand these are just some tips that I have picked up in my years of doing lettering. I am not an expert on this by any sense of the means. Matter of fact, I kind of half-assed my way through it because I really hate being constrained by rules. So oftentimes when you see my lettering, it's always going to go off the side of the page or it's not going to be perfectly even. It's just, that's just how I roll. I'm not, I'm, I'm sloppy and I half-ass things. So, um, so I'm going to give you some ideas, but basically if you want to be less of a half-asser, I'm sure if you search lettering and spacing on Instagram, you'll be able to find, or on Google, I'm sure you'll be able to find some people who are a little bit more, um, technical because there's beautiful work out there, but I'm just going to give you some basic ideas to get started with. So, um, we'll talk about spacing first. Now, this is something that to this day when I'm doing work, especially at my day job, when I need to center things or to make sure that they look good, I have to force myself to pay attention because it is not something that I just do naturally. It is not intuitive for me to make sure that when you're doing when you're lining up like a word and then another word underneath it, that they're going to be centered correctly. So one of the ways you want to do it is you want to get a ruler. Now this ruler is one of my favorite rulers. It's an, I think it's an artist loft brand ruler I got from Michael's. Yeah, it's artist loft. That is like three or four bucks. You get it in the section with all the pencils and the drafting tools. It's two inches wide by, um, what? 18 inches long. And let me see. Oh God, my camera's like not focusing. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's see here. You can see that it's clear. And the nice part about it being clear is if you lay it down on a piece of paper or whatever, you can easily center it and like make the, the line straight. I suck ass at using other kinds of rulers. Generally speaking, they tend to, uh, it's hard for me to get a straight line. Like I'll think it's all lined up and then I'll draw a line and it'll be all like kerfluey. So um, but this, this ruler is my best friend. I use it at home. I have some at work. We actually had one at work that broke and it was just a fragment of it. And we kept using it until we got another one because we loved it that much. So these rulers are handy. And then a pencil is generally speaking, like, you know, a pencil and an eraser are your best friends for this. Again, do as I say, not as I do. I don't often use my pencils because they annoy me. I like to, I like to live dangerously, but pencils are really helpful. Okay. So for example, one of the tips in terms of spacing your letters is if you have a word, I'm going to keep using like a couple of phrases. So the phrases that I'm going to use, I'm going to just use one phrase, I think for most of my demonstrations today, and it's going to be planner girls rule. Okay, that's going to be the phrase that I use. I'm going to leave myself a post-it so I don't forget that's, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so planner girls rule is the phrase I'm going to be doing. So if I wanted to do planner girls rule and I wanted to center it on the paper, then I would take a look at how wide the paper it is. It's eight and a half inches. And then I would divide eight and a half inches by two. So that's, 
I can do math, that's four and a quarter inches. So yeah, one, two, three, four, and then a quarter. So I'm gonna just make a mark there as the center, right? And then I'm gonna decide, so I'm gonna go an inch in on the paper. So I'm gonna draw, whoops, well, whatever, close enough. So it's an inch in, so that's how wide I want my first word to be, and there's my center, okay? Now you look at your word planner, and that's gonna be your top word, right? So P-L-A-N-N-N-E-R, P, P, I can't spell, P-L-A-N-N-E-R. So that's seven letters, so you find the center. So if it's an odd number, you pick the center letter, in this case is N. If it's a four letter word like rule, you go R-U and then think about the, the center. So you would put the, the center of those two letters here, and if it's a, an odd number, then you take that middle letter and center it over the center. Now, if you're trying to really get good at spacing your words, you could start by the middle letter and then just go outward. I'm just sketching the letters out right now. And that would be your way to center it. And then if you have the center here in the middle, it's girls is G-I-R-L-S. So this would be R and then L-S-I-G and then and that's how you would center that to make it like have that going down using that center mark and just playing it out now you would go in an ideal world you would just write this out and then you would thicken the letters or you would write them in pencil and then go over them to get the centering done first like you don't want to start fancy lettering right from the start unless you're pressed for time you just want to get the letters sketched out and then add on to them and that's a really quick way to keep everything centered. Now, if you don't want to draw the line and measure it out, write your first, and you're like in your planner, write your first word and then find the center of that word and then build your words from that. So instead of drawing the line, you just write planner and then from that N, you write girls and then from that R, you write rule. You see what I'm saying? That's to center it. Now, if you're, another fun way to do things is to justify them. So you could do, you know, plan, and then justify to the left, trying to keep everything evenly spaced. So you can justify it to the left and have it look like that, or you can justify it to the right, and that also can look. That can also look kind of one, two, three, four, five. So you want to try and keep the letters occupying about the same space. If you can go backwards, go backwards. I'm not good at going backwards, so I don't always do it. It feels kind of awkward. So that's some ways you can lay your letters out in just a general way, right? Now that's just using the same font. Now, another method, so that's just doing them flat out. Now, another method of making some interesting, just plain layouts is to um, use a shape. Now you can be, what you would do is you would take your pencil and you could do like an arch right and then you would write you would start in the center if that's what you were trying to do and use the arch as a guideline planner and then you could do a second arch you know and do And you could just kind of arch them out and you can do that with whatever shape you want you can do it like a wavy line or you can do a big circle or you can do and a lot of the time since i suck at drawing like um really even circles i will find like things and i'll test it out and i'll look and like is this jar going to be a good circle or is it going to be too deep oftentimes at work you'll see me going around looking for everything that's possibly round to find something to serve as a good guideline so that it looks even you don't have to, and they make tools for that too. I just don't happen to own any of them. Um, but yeah, it's another way to do it. Okay, so that's a basic way. Now for set for for spacing your letters from each other, the biggest issue is getting them laid out so that each letter kind of occupies about the same real estate. And then you go and you thicken. Now the biggest thing is to start thin if you're going to thicken or if you're going to draw around them with its pencil because you want to kind of make sure that the letters look even. Like you don't want the, I to, the L to be super skinny and then the N to be super fat unless that's what you're going for. 
So it's just trying to keep things looking um, uniform. That's going to make it look super clean, at least in theory. Um, okay, so now, so that's an idea about spacing. And another thing you can do to keep a straight line is to just line your ruler up and just write along it. Instead of using a pencil, just line it up like this and then use that as your guideline. This is what I actually do most of the time because ain't nobody got time for erasing. And then you just sort of eyeball it. And again, eyeballing it doesn't always work out, but you never know. Okay, so it's another way to do it, okay? Now, to get into a little bit more of the meat of this, when you come, when you want to start doing something, you want to start mixing fonts up, or you want to start mixing sizes up, one of the things you want to do is you want to pick a couple of different styles that look kind of cool together. So, like, instead of Planner Girls Rule All in Printing, you could write Planner Still using the same centering idea, but just adding a cursive in there, you know, and that can look cool. Or you can do like the sans serif kind of, or you can do lowercase. And I've talked about this in some of my video, you know, planner. You know, you just vary up kind of how you're writing. And it's very simple. You don't have to do a lot of thickening. You don't have to do a lot of embellishing. Just change the styles in which you're writing. And already your planner is going to look slightly more fabulous. Okay. Now, when you're changing up fonts and you're really trying to lay something out to have it look like really sexy, like if it's for a, pl a challenge or if you're doing a card or you want it to look really sick, then you need, and you're going to like do a little bit more, spend a little bit more time embellishing your, um, your, your words, then that's when we really start getting into some of the base, the real, like, like ideas of layout. Okay. So we'll keep using planner girls rule. Now, when you look at this phrase, planner girls rule, you have to think about what word you want to emphasize if you're going to do something fancy. Now in planner girls rule, I would say rule would be the word for me to emphasize. Now, one of the ways you can do it is you can just start by sketching it out. Like I like the arch idea. So I would think, okay, so I would want to do like, and I like the look here, the look that I did here of the printing and then the, the cursive. So my idea would be to do some kind of printing on the arch and then add the cursive for girls and then do like a big finale with the rule, you know, except I missed with my, I wanted it to be wider than that. So I would want, and that's why you do it in pencil first. So I would do like a wide, like embellished. I don't even know if you can see this with the, the lighting, but so you, you, you sketch out your idea. And then once you have your idea, okay, you take your, your pen, your pencil, and you kind of, there's the arch I want to use, and I'm going to kind of do a line along the bottom, and then another line here to kind of give you my, to give you my, my general shape. This is one of the things you can do to make lettering look really cool, is to think about it in shapes, and then fill the shapes. Now, if I was doing this, and I was trying to be super fancy, then I would have measured out with this and done like the equidistant arch and then measured these so they weren't all over the place but I'm lazy and don't care that much right now <laughs> so okay so I'm going to start in the middle again but I'm going to do lowercase because that's what I thought would look nice so I'm going to start with the n here and then the other n and like I said I'm following the arch so there's my planner right? And then I'm going to take a few minutes and just quickly fatten these because that's all I want to do with them. I want to keep them simple because remember the word I'm emphasizing is going to be rule. That's going to be the word that I want to have the most pizzazz. And since I'm not getting super fancy with this, these, um, oops, I have a backing on this. Um, 
I'm not actually using cardstock. Now I kind of missed my spacing here. Notice that this end kind of sticks out, but whatever. Like I said, this is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm thickening up my letters, right? Now, my next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the cursive. Trying, like I said before, to keep it kind of lined up with what I was doing. And then, you know, because I'm doing fanciness, I'm going to kind of do a little downstroke thickening here. Again, this is fast and sloppy. I'm just trying to give you the general idea of it. But the slower you go, much as I hate to say go slow because I am impatient, the slower you go, the sexier it'll look. And then you want to fill up this lower space, except I think I drew the line a little lower than I wanted. So I'm going to start here. So you want to, I'm going to fill up these lines with my emphasized. And notice that the font that I've chosen for this word I'm emphasizing is more elaborate than the other ones. And then I'm just going to add some this in here. Again, fast and loose, not not doing too fancy here because I want to talk about this. See then, and then you would just erase the uh, erase the lines. buggy over here. Okay, whatever. It's fast and dirty erase here. And then you have this, Planner Girls Rule. Okay? So that's one idea of taking your emphasis. Now taking the same emphasis word and the same phrase, but this time I'm going to do it inside of a circle. So I'm going to draw my janky little circle here. And I'm going to Now notice I'm going fast and I'm not measuring. This is again a hallmark. When you write inside of a circle like this, the goal is to fill the circle up. So I have planner and then And then I can go and embellish these. And because I have these little cracks, this is where I can do like a like a flower, some shit, you know, just to... But then you erase the circle, and you have this circular letter. And that's another way that you can... And you can do this in any shape. You can do it with a heart. You can do it with a diamond. You can do it with um, a square, rectangle, you know, octagon. I don't know. I never took geometry, so some of those various shapes and you just the idea is to kind of fill it and when you're doing this kind of lettering take note about how long your 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 phrase that you're going to use is planner girls rule is short so you can only fill up so much with that no matter how big you make the letters but if you're going to do something like i don't know she believes she could so she did or some other cheesy quote like that like the bigger the quote is the either if you make a smaller, the more you have to condense it, or if you're gonna make it bigger, you can go really fancy with the letters. So that's why taking a few minutes with a pencil and just sort of sketching your ideas out will help you kind of, help you really get an idea of what kind of arrangement will suit the, the size of what you're planning on writing. Because it's, it's often what it's, what it's gonna be based on. Um, so that's one way to do it. Now, I want to mention that you need to really, when you vary your fonts, don't go too crazy. Now those three, these are all three letter words. So three letter sentences. So three fonts. That's cool, man. I wouldn't do more than that though, unless you're getting like super crazy with it. You want to pick a couple, like you could do like, you know, if I was in my planner. Planner. I'm 
also trying to do like that angling thing where you kind of change the angles of the letters to make them um, look more, the, like to create more interest. Just try, experiment. Experiment with various fonts, things that you've learned. Like take all the different stuff I've taught you in Llama's Love Lettering, from the sans serif fonts to the to the to the cartoon lettering to the thickened down strokes to just the varied printing and just try mixing them up together with a pencil just sketch it doesn't have to be pretty just see what you think looks cool so you start finding the ones that you really like together you know and then so that's really important try it in different shapes like i said and then one of the practice with the ruler get better at lining things up and then the big thing I'm going to finally add to you is, the, remember the doodling where I taught you about like the hearts and the flowers and the arrows and the flourishes, etc. And we'll spend some more time on doodling later, but those are immeasurably wonderful when you're doing this kind of layout, especially if you screw up. Like here, I forgot that it was going to be, that it wasn't going to fit perfectly. I didn't intend for these spaces. I didn't intend to have to use the exclamation point, but the doodles filled it up nicely. And if, especially if you're doing this kind of a shape thing, you want to fill your space up. Don't go overboard. Too many doodles looks like, you know, too many stickers, except if you like too many stickers and go for it. But if you, you know, sometimes when you feel like you've just done too much, err on the side of less doodles and then add more until you feel comfortable. It's always, and if you're doing pencil, add as many as you want. And then when you ink in, then you'll start to realize how many maybe you shouldn't have put there. Um, I know this was kind of brief. Well, not really for my videos, but um, I just wanted to give a brief overview on some tips for laying out, especially if you're doing challenges and stuff. I just got on, on Periscope under Llama Letters, so I'm thinking about doing a session to answer lettering specific questions, and I'm probably going to do that this next week if I can figure out how to use it. So if you don't follow me on Periscope, I'm, on, I'm at Llama Letters. I, if I follow you and I haven't tuned in anything yet because I don't know how to use it yet, but I will be doing a Q&A live just to talk about lettering questions, so start thinking about them. This isn't going to be the same as like I'll tell you all about my personal life. This is more ask me some specific questions that I might be able to help you with. Anyway, I hope you had a good time watching this video. Um, I will see you next time. Glad to be back on the wagon again and happy lettering.